Hello YouTube, uh, Bill Griffith back again. Uh, in my previous video I showed uh, um, OpenShift in a Metro HA MZR VPC uh, setup and I used a PHP app to uh, demonstrate the failover capabilities. Uh, now I'm going to install the uh, IBM Business Automation uh, Manager Open Edition. Uh, this is from the uh, previous uh, Red Hat uh, Process Automation and Decision Manager. Uh, which IBM has taken over uh, support uh, for these uh, products. So uh, IBM Process Automation, as I mentioned, is from the Red Hat. It's uh, from open source, 100% open source. Uh, it's a cloud native based uh, development and execution uh, product. Uh, supports BPMN, which is the Business uh, Process Modeling Notation Industry Standard. Has support for case management. Uh, and user interface uh, sort of form design capabilities. Uh, additionally, if you purchase uh, a license for the process automation manager, you also get support for the decision automation under the covers, uh, which you can also uh, purchase uh, separately <clears throat> and individually. Now, uh, process automation uh, manager, it's based off of these open source projects, so Drools, JBPM, and Cogito. Uh, and these are upstream uh, projects, so the open source community builds these, and then the um, the uh, uh, process automation uh, open source community grabs these and gets them all working together, integrates them, and package the packages them up into this process automation uh, manager open edition. Uh, and then when they find uh, bugs and whatnot, then they contribute that back. Now, one of the reasons to purchase a license is if you find if if there is a bug or a security problem, like the uh, Log4j problem that happened recently, uh, then um, you know IBM will patch that and get you specifically whatever version you're on. They'll get you a patch out uh, to fix that uh, problem, that security error. Uh, much more rapidly than this loopback cycle here that might take weeks or months before it gets back. And in fact, if you're on, you know, say version eight and the, uh, and the bug is also in version seven, sorry, if you're on version seven and um, the bug is discovered, but the community has moved on to version eight, then, uh, you know, th there's not a lot of interest in patching older versions in the open source community. So when you get support, then you're getting that. So if you're on version 7, then IBM will give you a bug fix and a patch and support for those older releases, which uh, often is not done in the open uh, community. So that's part of the reasons for the, uh, the support and license. Uh, as I mentioned, these are from the open source uh, uh, community products and projects. So the Drools, the JBPM, the Cogito, and then the Key Server here. Key stands for Knowledge is Everything. Uh, and this shows the history of these uh, products that go into these uh, products. And as I said, IBM has taken over uh, the support for these. Still 100% community owned and driven. And uh, it, you, what you're really purchasing is support and enterprise um, <clears throat> um, patches and support and uh, knowledge and uh, those types of things. Okay, so what we'll show is this uh, BPMN diagram. And what you see here is these little green boxes. This is what we like to say as the picture is the code. So this is very similar to like a flow chart. Uh, and these little icons mean things. So this green means it starts the process. This red means that it stops. And this diagram is really sort of a template. Uh, within this template, you may have thousands or millions of instances that flow through this flow chart, so to speak. <clears throat> and in fact, each instance can vary. So this uh, diamond here represents a gateway. It's a decision. So one instance may go this approval path where this human, that's what this little icon is saying, this human takes some work. A different instance might go down to this path, so this other path out of this gateway, and then over to here. So that's what these uh, represent. These uh, little gray boxes here, these are called swim lanes. This is saying that this task is owned by, the, the approval task is done by a manager. The part purchasing department owns these tasks. And these swim lanes generally represent a role. So as I mentioned, different instances go through this template 
So there might be 10 people in the purchasing department and Bob does one instance and Susie does a different instance. And so th this represents sort of a role uh, more so than an actual individual. <clears throat> so let's uh, go through the tool and see this in action and then uh, try to break some stuff and show some of the benefits of the OpenShift under the covers that uh, supports this. Oh, and before we get to that, uh, here's sort of the architectural layout of it. Uh, what we'll pull up is the Business Central. That's sort of the design center where you, uh, uh, business, this is sort of tech-savvy business users. They don't have to be, uh, you know, full-fledged programmers. Uh, they can build those diagrams, as I was showing here. This is designed that business and IT can work a little bit more closely together because this is generally easy to understand by most people in an organization. You're not looking at code, but this, this picture is the code. So we like to say, like I said, the, the process, the diagram is the code. So uh, behind each of these big blocks, you implement a use, an HTML page, or in here, this is a decision table, so a rule uh, rules that get called at this uh, step. Uh, you could also call out to other backend APIs or REST services or Java code or you know whatever you want it as part of this uh, this workflow. <clears throat> so the key components that are part of the product is the business central. This is sort of the design development environment. And then when you build your uh, your workflow uh, template, your uh, process application, then you deploy it over here to a key server, which as I mentioned, if you have the process automation edition, then that includes the processes, the BPMN, as well as the rules engine also. And those are microservices uh, based off of the, you know, the, the faster, more agile uh, architecture of uh, today. Now, usually uh, you're, uh, you have custom application, client applications. These could be .NET apps. These could be Java apps. These could be HTML apps. They will then call this workflow engine, rule engine, through a set of APIs such as uh, REST APIs. Now, for our demo, we'll just use the Business Central because it has some administrative tools and user interface tools for uh, building workflows. And generally, these, these kinds of products are used for back office uh, types of work. So think of these people that are building it, and then even these people that are using the workflow generally are your employees at the organization. Over here, it would be like the purchasing department, the managers of your employees, maybe your business partner suppliers. Generally, you know, this isn't something that uh, end users use, like the general public. Uh, you can, you could expose, you know, submit an, uh, a request offer or something like that could be public, but then all of these other steps behind the scenes, these would probably be <clears throat> back office and typically uh, the users would not see the end users, the general public, meaning they would not see all of these other steps. Uh, they'll just maybe get this final, you know, um, order back. So imagine like order to cash, you go to Amazon and purchase something. Maybe that front end shopping cart is exposed, but then all the behind the scenes fulfillment that uh, Amazon is doing to go pick the products and pack them up into a shipping container or uh, package them up into a box and then put them onto a truck and then route them out to you. That's all the work that's going on behind the scenes that I as a consumer don't really see. At the end, you know, Amazon says your package is here in three days. And so that would then maybe go back to the end user. So that's really what these tools uh, do. So let's uh, show the product uh, installed. Okay, so as mentioned, this is my previous uh, cluster. Actually for this one, I just installed a new cluster, PAM DFW MZR. Uh, it's in a VPC. It also has the OpenShift Data Foundation, uh, and I'm going to install the OpenShift, um, I'm sorry, the uh, Process Automation Manager Open Edition. <clears throat> and uh, as you see, I have the uh, ODF uh, installed. That gives me the uh, storage so I can do uh, high availability and uh, improve my um, uh, disaster recovery in a metro. Okay, with uh, all uh, IBM products, uh, definitely refer to the official documentation. And so if you search on business automation, IBM Business Automation Open Edition, you'll see the installation and deployment guide. I want the one for OpenShift Container Platform. So I'm gonna click that link. You see at present, it uh, refers over to the Red Hat documentation. So I'm uh, drilling in on that. 
And one of the first things that you'll need is a pull secret to get the official tested uh, versions. The trial of this uh, software um, worked for me without this pull secret, but if you want to do the authoring environment with uh, uh, persistence and things like that and uh, high availability failover and whatnot, then uh, I would recommend using <coughs> uh, this one. So uh, per this link, so uh, you know, get a project for uh, OCP. So if I pull up my command line here, I've logged in and the way to log in is go over here to your account do web console and so in the uh, console you can copy the login command and then display the token I'm not going to do that right now but then copy that whole uh, URL and um, uh, paste it and then run it over here and that gets you into your OC environment uh, and I need to create a new project so uh, in my projects I create a new project let's call it uh, Pam demo I create and then if I go over here to command line I can do OC uh, project to switch to that PAM demo and now I'm in that project and the reason I wanted to do that is over here in the instructions it wants me to uh, create the pull secret and link it to the default uh, service account and the builder uh, as, uh, to build the uh, images uh, as well so I need to run these commands so uh, first step is to log into the registry, create a service account. So if I click this in a new tab, it pulls me up over here. And then this walks through the instructions. So let me kill this one. I'm going to navigate to this. I'm opening this in a new tab also. And then I'm going to uh, log in. So you see here's my previous one, but let's create a new one. Let's call this... Uh, Pam demo for process automation manager and I'm going to do create. I go over here to my open shift secret and you see this Pam demo so I'm going to click that to download it and so that's going to add that pull secret to my current project and so now I can close this and you see here is my uh, secret name so I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to do this command here with that do the same thing for the builder and then I can go over to my project <clears throat> and um, add that you see the secret got added right here also with the uh, ID okay so let's go to the operator hub and I'm in the right project up here I'm going to search on business automation and you'll see there is a Red Hat edition which is version 7 and as I mentioned version 8 is uh, now IBM so I'm going to install this version you see the image it's using that's why I needed that pull secret so I'm going to install that and I wanted to go in the project that I just created here and associated that secret to so I'm going to install that I can close this pull secret and so it doesn't take very long the operator will install okay so now the operator is there but I need an instance of it so let's use this built-in installer here and I can log in with my credentials to my OpenShift, which is for me, W. Griffith. And I need to authorize, so I'm going to apply the selected permissions. And now I'm going to give this a project name, application name, uh, Pam Demo. And here are the choices, and as I said with that pull secret, then you can do these. The authoring, uh, check the docs uh, that may or may not be supported at this time through this installer. Uh, but this one I think uh, is so uh, check that out and verify against the docs the trial uh, should probably work even without the pull secret but I'm gonna go with this one this gives me the business um, central and then I'm just gonna accept the defaults on the rest of all of this obviously there's a lot of settings here you can customize uh, as desired so now that's deploying I can close that down, that's the installer, and now I can go back over to my project and scroll down, and here's my project, and you see it's doing the operator work, and so uh, in the uh, deployment config, uh, there is also the environment tab, and you'll see my username and the generated uh, password right here for the admin user 
So I'm going to copy that out so I can log into the Business Central when it's uh, up and ready. Okay, so that deployment is uh, ready. Let's just go check uh, all the other uh, pods that are in there. Okay, so I'm here and you see there's this nice little launcher URL that takes me to the route and I'm going to log into the newly installed. And now here is the Business Central. So I can author and design projects, deploy to servers, manage, track, etc. So let's go in here and there is a default MySpace. Space is just a way of organizing your projects. I can add projects uh, here, import projects, or let's just use some uh, pre-canned uh, samples. And specifically, let's try the mortgage process. Click it. Do OK. So it imported it and it's indexing. So here are the uh, artifacts. So for example, here's the user interface or of HTML page for capturing data. I can see the data object. This represents the data for the applicant. Go into that. And so this is sort of a low code environment. Behind the scenes, it's code, but you don't have to program in this environment. You can add fields and use these little wizards to fill things out. Now, this is not quite as business friendly as business automation workflow, uh, but this is good for uh, a little bit more technical audience, but still you know, better than having to go in and code everything from uh, scratch. And if I go into, you know, all the various forms and then I can go into my business process. This is the actual BPMN process that describes the workflow. So, you know, check some rules, uh, do a mortgage calculation and then pass it to a person to qualify the loan or not. And if it's denied, then increase the payment and sort of cycle back. And you see here it goes back and loops back and what have you. So then I can uh, close this one too and close all of these artifacts, go back to the main project page and deploy it. So that deployed, I can click here and get the green check that the application is deployed to my runtime. And so then I can go up here to the menu and go to process definitions and I'll see that uh, process template that I uh, deployed. So then the loan officer would take this information from a client that's looking to uh, uh, acquire a uh, loan and then click submit. Okay, so that instance of the uh, BPMN uh, diagram uh, started and you see here the little white, uh, I'm sorry, the little number indicates that it went this direction for instance one and it is here at the qualify. So I can go over here to my tasks and you'll see that that is waiting for somebody to claim it, a human. And so to claim it, as I mentioned before, a swim lane represents a, a set of people usually. So I'm going to claim this specific application. There could be a different person that would claim a different instance. And when I claim it, that just means I want to work on it. Now I might go off to lunch and come back later and start it. So now I'm actually going to start the pro that task associated with that process. And so I review the date uh, details here and say, okay, they're borrowing 10,000. It's a hundred thousand dollar house. Their income is okay. So I'm going to approve it. And so now I can go back to my process instances. You see, that's the uh, instance. I go back into the diagram and you see now it has gotten past this qualify phase, checked this decision gateway, and then is over here in the final approval step. So again, come back over here, look at my tasks. You'll see it's in the final approval stage. So I'm going to click this as ideally somebody else, maybe, maybe the manager. They would then claim this. I'm logged in as the admin user, but normally you'd change uh, roles would be a different person. I could also return this uh, task back to the team, the swim lane, uh, but uh, in this case I've taken it for myself. And then I'm going to say sounds good and they're approved. So uh, that is the um, BPMN uh, process automation manager open edition.
So now let me uh, break uh, break it and see that uh, it's using the uh, OpenShift uh, Data Foundation storage under the covers so that this could be highly available and uh, provide uh, redundancy uh, in the event that a data center goes down. Okay, so let's go back over here and I can see <clears throat> my deployment configs. I can see the Business Central there and I'm actually going to kill this pod. So right click and delete it. This is just to simulate that the server went down. You see it's terminating and immediately it picks that up and starts spinning up a new um, clone of that uh, application. But if I go up right here and try to refresh my business center that I just submitted this process definition, you see it's down because I just killed it uh, to emulate or simulate a uh, server going down. I could also just remove the server. Uh, same result is that the um, Kubernetes, the OpenShift uh, layer here, is detecting that and uh, trying to scale up that uh, the number of pods, the clones, to meet the specification of one pod should be running. So about two minutes later, that uh, pod, uh, a new pod comes online and it is running. So now I can refresh my page here. Got to log back in because the previous pod is gone. And so Business Central, and there's the data that I imported uh, earlier. And so process uh, mortgage application. So there you have it, uh, high availability or redundancy uh, built in. So it's not active active, but you see the RPO of zero. I didn't lose any data. RTO of uh, about two minutes. So uh, pretty good if I wanna get an RTO of zero, so no downtime whatsoever, then I need to set up an active active um, uh, database and all single points of failure effectively need to be highly available. Uh, so uh, that's another uh, exercise to do at some point, but uh, hopefully this has been helpful and uh, thanks for watching.